Namaskaram to all Rasikas and welcome to the Vande Guru Paramparam series. Over the last many sessions, we have spoken about a number of Bhageyakaras, a number of composers. And of course, we know that for Carnatic music, we have the Trinity, Yagaraja Swami, Mutuswami Dikshitar, and Shama Shastri as the, the core of the Carnatic music that we have today. Today, the discussion is going to be on a very interesting note. From the time of the Trinity till today, how did we get this treasure of Kritis, of compositions from the Trinity? What were the different sources? How they have been handed down to us? What has happened during this journey of the Kritis from the composer till it, it's, it's come to our hands today? These are the different areas that we're going to discuss today. And to take us through this session today, we have an eminent speaker with us, Dr. T.R. Arvind. Arvind, welcome to the session. <clears throat> Arvind is actually a dentist by profession and an avid music researcher by his passion. It's a very, very rare combination. He is undergone training in vocal music from Sangeeta Kalanadi, Srimati R. Vedavalyamma for a period of five years and also underwent training in violin from Sri T. H. Gurumurthy, the brother of the famed Sri T. H. Viku Vinayakaram for a period of 10 years. He has been given a lot of lecture demonstrations on various topics related to music. He's also been a singer in the Melatur Bhagavata Mela troupe, headed by Sri Mahalingam. And uh, but among, the, among his various researches in music, one of the key research areas is to look, to research into the manuscripts of the Jagaraja Kritis from various sources, Dikshita Kritis and many other Vagyakaras and composers. So he has been actually doing this research of taking the manuscripts, looking out for the manuscripts, researching them, going through them and finding out what has changed, what has not changed and other aspects. So I don't think there is anybody more apt, Arvind, than you to take us through this session today. And I'm really happy that you could be with us today. Once again, welcome to the session. <clears throat> so as I mentioned in the introduction, Arvind, so we have now the Trinity, right? So the, the period of the Trinity, about 200 years, 150, 200 years back, we had them. Then their compositions, it went on from generation to generation to generation, and now we have it with us. <clears throat> but not all the compositions probably were there in the notation form in, at the time of the Trinity. Or they themselves probably didn't have a manuscript notated, etc. So how have this been, has this been handed over, you know, from the time of the Trinity till today? And how many Kritis and compositions as from your research is still extinct today of the trinity that we have with us if you could elaborate a bit on that namaskar thanks a lot uh, Simonium, for giving me an opportunity to talk about my research um, i never had an idea of doing research in music i was just a student and i am still a student but i was a student who is much interested in learning the piece of Tyagaraja swami uh, even while i was learning i, I made sure that I won't change any of the compositions taught to me by my teacher. Any, I will not even add a single single because I felt that it should be preserved as it is. So then due to my work pressure, I was unable to continue my studies, I mean music studies. And then I happened to visit um, GOML, Government Oriental Manuscript Library in Chennai, uh, which has a lot of manuscripts, I mean transcripts of Marajabet manuscripts. I'll just give a small introduction about this Varajabet manuscript because many of uh, the viewers might not be aware of this. Right? Varajabet Venkatrana Bhagavadar was a prime disciple of uh, Tyagaraja Swami. He was there with he was there with him for around 26 years and learned from Swami and also notated the compositions learned by him even during his time, that is during the period of Swami So these manuscripts were handed over. Actually, it's a family manuscript. This corpus was added then by his son Krishna Swami Bhagavadar, who was also a disciple of Swami Gal, and then by his grandson Ram Swami Bhagavadar, who was not a disciple but has learned from his father Krishna Swami Bhagavadar. 
and this family manuscripts was handed over to Madurai Savarasabha Library. Now these manuscripts cannot be viewed by us. A lay public cannot go and see the, these manuscripts. But the transcripts of these manuscripts are available and are now they, uh, they are housed in GOML, Government Oriental Manuscript Library, Chennai. Um, so I happened to visit these manuscripts, see these manuscripts. Then I realized that um, a lot of changes can be observed between the manuscripts, the version of manuscripts and what we hear today. Initially, I was so skeptical and I didn't even believe this manuscript versions. I was of opinion that why should such an amount of uh, change we are observing between these two versions. Then I happened to contact my uh, Chitti actually, who, uh, who, was a, who, was, who has learned music but not a performing artist. And she asked me to search because only if you search, I started to search. So that made me to do a study on manuscriptology. And in this journey, two aspects, the musical aspects, how oh, I am singing at least a bit of uh, my rendition. I um, actually, I pay tribute to my teacher, Srimati Vedali Amma. And the musicological aspect, I pay my tribute to Ramana Ansar because his uh, sir and his site were uh, played a much important role in my life to learn this uh, of our musicology. So uh, when we uh, talk about the Trinity, we do not have any evidence of them writing a manuscript, of them, uh, uh, of these three people writing their compositions by themselves. Um, so the compositions were predominantly transferred from them to us by the disciple lineage. So of these three, Swamigal had a large number of disciples, around 30, I think, 30 or more, but 30 has been um, recorded elsewhere. So, these disciples then so, so, so this you are speaking about Tyagaraja Swami God. Yes, yes, yes. So these can be these first people who have learned from Swami God or Dikshita can be called as a uh, first generation disciples and they taught to next set of uh, disciples. So what happened when um, the Kacheri format came into view? There was a much crossover between these two traditions. In the sense that a person might have learned from only one teacher till the time. But due to uh, the um, requirement of in improving his repertoire, he must have uh, learned from other uh, disciples also. And second thing, Swamigal was much popular during the period. So everyone was much interested to learn more of his compositions. So everyone started to learn as much as they can. So they contacted other disciple lineage and also they uh, learned many compositions. We have so many evidences for, uh, for this crossover. So after the second generation, um, there was a mix up of the versions, which was prevalent among the disciples. So after, at, after this point of time, we cannot say uh, this disciple belonged to this particular lineage or in the, in the Umayabram school, but we can say this person has learned from two different schools. We can say that, for example, yes, um, who he was a disciple of Vajapeta Krishna Sai Bhagavadar and um, Umayabram brothers. Krishna Bhagavadar, Sundar Bhagavadar. Umayabram brothers, again, they were a direct disciple of Tyagara Swami. So, under Madhuri, we, we get to see a crossover between these, um, the various disciples. Then, at this one point, Arvind, if you could just also elaborate a bit on the main Shishya Paramparas. So, for the okay. listener, so they can keep track of that, yeah. Uh, Swami had, uh, as I said earlier, he had many number of disciples, uh, noteworthy disciples. But we usually point to three or four disciple lineage. Actually, it's not um, right from our side because we should pay tribute to others also. Uh, the three main disciple uh, lineage uh, include Umayabram brothers, Krishna Bhagavadar, Sundara Bhagavadar, Tillestanam Ramayengar, Vanaja Petra Venkatana Bhagavadar, and his son Krishna Sai Bhagavadar, Manamuchadi Venkata Subhayar, who was also his uh, aunt's son, Swamigal's aunt's son. So these four lineage are so popular because Manavachavadi lineage, uh, you can find a plenty of musicians, composer musicians, like Mahavaidyanashvan, Patnam Subramani, yeah, all even Prud Sarabha Sastrigal, all, uh, not only they were good musicians, but also good uh, composers. Umayadram lineage, you find plenty of good concert musicians, like uh, Maharajavam Vishwanatha, yeah, even before that Umayadram Swaminatha, yeah. So uh, these 
uh, and the second thing is that Umayyad Brahm uh, lineage they center around Chennai. Chennai was becoming a good seat of music at that point of time, and they started to center around Chennai, and hence they became so popular. But what happened to this other two lineages, Tilasthanam um, school and Malajapet school, is that Malajapet Venkatraman Bhagavadar centered himself around Velur Malajapet. So you, you, even if you go there, you can, and he belonged to Sarvashtra community. And if uh, if you just enquire any of the Sarvashtra member, they can uh, even trace the lineage to Venkatraman Bhagavadar, Krishna Bhagavadar. But unfortunately, they didn't come to the concert circuit, and hence this lineage uh, didn't, uh, I mean, not known to many. And a part of this lineage also went to Bangalore and Mysore, and they were also performing artists there. Tilestan uh, Ramayangar had many of, um, like, um, Hariketa Vidwan, Krishna Bhagavad. He was a disciple of Tilestan um, Ramayangar. But after this period, you do not find a propagation of the kritis or the versions learned by Tilestan school to the next lineage. So this, there was a lack in it. So what happened over a period of time, this, um, this thing, Tilestan lineage almost uh, faded out. And we had only these three, these three main lineages. Of these three main lineages, only we have two, Manabuchari and Umayyabha, which are so active. And Vajrapet is not so active. Apart from this, you also have other good disciples like uh, Veena Kupayar. Veena Kupayar was a disciple of Swamigal and his, his uh, son and the disciple was Thiruvattu Thagayar. Thiruvattu is a very good uh, teacher also. He has taught many students. So that, but we are not talking about that particular lineage. And, um, Nangavaram Nilakantayar. He was a Vidwan who was um, living near Karur. He hails from a place called as Nangavaram. Karur, wherein he taught many students. But we can uh, find a note about these musicians even uh, in a book by Karunamal Sagaram, uh, by Abraham Pandita. He has mentioned about these Vidwans, like Nangavaram Nilakantayar. But after the period, uh, due to lack of disciples, these Vidwans didn't shine. So this happened to this main lineages. So uh, even as early as in 1856 or 1858, that period, there was a, a, a book published by name Sangeeta Sarvata Saha Sangraham. Sangeeta Sarvata Saha Sangraham. This book perhaps could be the first book to publish the Tyagada Kritis notation. It does not have, it, it provides a text for many Kritis, but not a uh, notation for all the Kritis mentioned. For a few, see 20 or 25 Kritis, it gives a notation. But the Raga names uh, given there um, differ much, much from what we, we call it today. So this is a book. So what happened simultaneously, uh, like uh, the spread of these compositions to disciples, spread of compositions also occurred to these books, texts. These texts also play, played a very important role. So when we want to study the changes or what happened to these Kritis of Tyagaraja Swami, we need to refer invariably to these texts. Because we do not have a recording of gramophone recording of all the kritis entered by all the artists. Because this, um, the thing is, uh, we might have around 25 to, or, or 45 to 50 prominent musicians. We have a recording only of those 50 musicians, the violinist or or uh, veena players or vocalists, any any which. Way. But uh, can we restrict our music only to these set of musicians? I I, I don't think so. And second thing. Uh, uh, for example, the, we can hear the voice of Adikuri Ramana Jengar. Can we hear the voice of his guru, Ramana Puchi Srima Sengar? No, we, we, we don't have an opportunity to listen to his voice. So how about his versions? How about his guru, Patnam Suramaniyar? We talk a lot about him. We really admire his compositions, but we don't have an opportunity to listen to his compositions. So uh, if you want to analyze the changes, we need to also look into his manuscripts. But there's also a very um, negative opinion regarding manuscripts that they are just papers. How can a paper reflect or how can a paper give us a clue regarding a, a, an art which is which is predominantly uh, spread through oral oral transmission? And the problem is, but what I would say is there are two things here. Uh, I think this point will be of much use even in our later part of the discussion. Because, um, for example, Yagaraja Swamigal is there and he has, he has sung few compositions, of his compositions. By reading these manuscripts, we can definitely say that what were the musical phrases, the phrases of a particular raga used by him. 
for example, uh, I am just uh, perusing some Valajapat manuscript. I am taking one kriti X. That X kriti says Sri Rama Padama, and uh, uh, I can easily uh, see the uh, musical phrases for Sri Rama Padama Ni Kripa Chalune. I can sing Amrita Vagini. I can sing the Amrita Vagini because I I know the swaras. But can I say this is the way in which Tyagaraj Swami has sung that I cannot say it because I can say these were the phrases used by him. I cannot definitely say I cannot even say this was the way uh, this kriti was sung by him. A party coming to know if was Sri Rama Padamana Sri Rama Padinara Sri Rama Sri Rama Padna Vitriya. So these subtle differences or subtle um, details cannot be cannot be seen when we produce a manuscript. But this kind of problem also exists with oral tradition. Because when we when we learn from our teacher, we can say, I, I am singing in the way in which I was taught by my teacher. I cannot say that Tyagara Swami is not a I cannot definitely say that. Because there's a period of 12 to 3 years or more between us and, and Swami and a lot of chairs have taken place. If a graph on recording at the path, the way in which a particular kriti was sung by, by Koyamadu Thai or Bangalore Thai or Silam Godavari is very much different from what we sing this, what we what we sing now or what we hear now. The same kriti. Even the early recordings of Maharaja Vishnu the year, the to, uh, in any which ragam is much different than his later recordings. So our music has undergone a change and it should go, it should undergo a change. Every art form must undergo a change, change for it to survive. So, uh, what the point? So, this is one thing here, uh, Arvind. So, uh, to the point that you mentioned, I think if it's a if it's a performing art, right, it will naturally undergo change. The moment it each person sings or each artist sings, naturally there is going to be a yes, change yes. in the way it's going to get produced out of that artist. Yes. Now, when you mentioned about the sources, uh, of course, the Shishya Parampara is a source. Okay in terms of how the different shishyas in that parampara have sung whom we can hear today probably through some records and how probably the most our teacher has taught it to us so this is one one set of source that we have the other is the manuscript now manuscript is it available only for the valaja school or are there manuscripts also available the earlier day manuscripts also for the other schools From what I have inquired, uh, the Tilastam Ramayanga used to write manuscripts, used to record okay. quotations, the Kritis with quotations. But unfortunately, they didn't survive. We do not know what happened to those manuscripts, they were lost. Um, again, Umayar from Krishna Bhagavad and Sundar Bhagavad, they didn't write any notations. They didn't okay. even record the kicks of Kritis. So uh, that line is lost. Uh, perhaps in later period, Few of the members of, uh, for example, Manjapuri Ramachandra Bhagavadar, who was a descendant of Umayabram Sundara Bhagavadar and Krishna Bhagavadar, used straight manuscripts. Again, uh, I, I didn't get to see those manuscripts, but I, I was aware of those manuscripts being present uh, at least in the during 1950s or so. So the late Umayabram disciples used to record, but not the first disciples. Again, in a Kupayar, there's a manuscript um, in uh, Sir site. Music research library.net. There's a manuscript there uh, attributed to Vina Kopayar, but it has only texts. But there are few points which can be compared uh, with the Marajapat manuscripts and Vina Kopayar manuscript. So at least Vina Kopayar, we have one, one uh, evidence at least. Marajapat manuscript, we have. Tilas Kanam is lost. Manamuchar Yankar Supayar, again, uh, as far as I have inquired, he has not, uh, yes, he has it written, but they were lost. So um, the only available with you is uh, the Valaja Pet and uh, a few of Veena Kupayar. These are the only two later musicians. Yes, later musicians. But at least uh, if, 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 um, I have a manuscript of a single musician representing each different tradition. At least I can have, I can say, I can have that. And second thing is, Valaja Pet tradition also have an important, uh, other important factor. Uh, Venkatra Bhagavadar could be one of the earliest disciples of Chap. Because uh, if you are going to see the um, the timeline of the Sishyas, various Sishyas, Lalbudi Rama here, or Tilasthanam Rama Ayengar, or Manamuchari Venkatasubayar, Veena Kopayar, they were all born around 1800s. But 
uh, Venkatra Bhagavadar was born in 1781. So at least 15 years difference was there between uh, Swamigal and Bhagavadar. And hence, uh, he could be one of the earliest disciples. Right. So what I was saying is that um, even in the world tradition, uh, we, can, we, can, we can say that I have learned this. My teacher has taught this. I am seeing like my teacher. But we cannot say Swamigal has sung this, this way. I am seeing that way. So this point is common to both world versions and textual traditions. Right. So, so, so which also brings to a point, of course, it is not uh, we in this forum cannot debate or decide on any of these things. But at oh, least it brings out a point that, you know, when you talk about authenticity also, it is authentic to the level our teacher has taught us. Yes, yes, yes. Right? So up to that level only we can trace an authenticity of things unless and until you have a very strong uh, notation. So here I would like to maybe slightly, you know, divert to maybe Deekshitar. Because there we typically see that you have this Sangira Sampradaya Pradarshini, which is treated as the main source for all Dikshitar Kritis written by his descendant itself, Subarama Dikshitar. So are things much better there in terms of Dikshitar Kritis? Do we have a much better, you know, standing? Um, I, no, no. I just want to make it clear um, that it's not regarding authenticity. We know it has been changed. So it's a, it's an effort to understand what was there before. That's what. So because yeah. we are much more interested, I don't think so. Any other community uh, like Carnatic music community gives an importance to a composer. I don't think so. Anyone ever gives that. True. In such a case, uh, we should be at least we not sing these versions. We not even um, for a musician if he's interested in just delivering his music, he he not even get uh, get to have interest in these versions. But if you are interested in the composer, how composer could have done, how a raga could have evolved over a period of time, this makes sense. So, see, in any field, you have two sections. One is the practitioners, other is the researchers. So, researchers always aid the practitioners to develop more because not everyone can do all the things. So, even in this field, I feel we need to do research and this research must be kept open. It is up to the musician to take or not to take. But it is the duty of researcher to keep it everything on the table at least it was there like this so coming to dikshitar um the Dik dikshitar also had disciples many disciples uh, he had um regarding the transmission of compositions the early part of 19th century was not aware of uh Muthuswami dikshitar to the extent as we are now the critics of Muthuswami Dikshita were not so popular. We can find, say, 25 to 30 compositions maximum uh, popular during that period, not more than that. If at all we get to see a rare kriti, not even a rare kriti, it might be rare, rare is again a relative term. It depends on the age in which we are. So uh, if you take any kriti, say, Sri Bhargavi Badra Medishito, this is more common now. We, we get to listen to a song so frequently, but what happened 15 years back? And the part of the part of the compositions like this uh, was brought out only by Subrahman Dikshita for first time. So at the Kumunadi, there are few books which give uh, the Diksha Kritis, but not to the extent of Subrahman Dikshita. Subrahman Dikshita has recorded around 230 compositions. At 230, le, for example, if you are going to see Nabo Manikriti, or I'm just saying that this is in random, Abho Manikriti or Sri Bhargavi. In Sri Nata Adhi Kuda, Sri Nata Adhi Kirtanam Kuda, Ebla Pustakatla, 1900s Kuna, the Pustakatla, Kuna Sandego. I don't remember seeing the Kri Sri Nata Adhi in any, any of the publication uh, which came before 1904. 1904 is the publication of So Sri Nata Adhi is the first Kriti of, 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 of Muthuswam Dikshidhar, and even that Kriti was not published in any of the text. Uh, before uh, which got published before 1900s, 1904. And because we don't have much recording, gamophone recordings. And uh, under, under the car, the Thrill Pa, uh, Gopala Krishna Bhajat compositions, Tyagaya compositions are so popular than the Diksha compositions. If a gramophone record, if you're going to examine, you find plenty of uh, Tyagaya Kritis or Arul uh, Pass. Or some other kritis, but not that of um, Muthuswami Dikshita. So Muthuswami Dikshita kritis were mostly preserved by his disciples rather than texts. 
here texts also preserved but there only the disciples played a major role in preserving the compositions of mutsam dikshita of these uh, of the very many disciples he had suddhamatram tambiyappan used to uh, write the kritis notation and it is said their family has notation but we cannot again peruse that second sampradaya pradarshini was published by subrama dikshita 1904 and it is support, supposed to be authentic because um, his period din saw an upsurge of diksha kritis he was the first one to publish many diksha kritis say out of 220 around 170 or 180 or 190 kritis were first published in in his book so there's no necessity for him to change any version and then publish to prove his authenticity and uh, he was he never uh, approached any publisher to publish his material he was in turn uh, approached by many and convinced by the king uh, the, the, the jagatvira muttukumar jagatvira ramakumar etava maharaja and upon his instruction he published the text so there's no necessity for him to prove his authenticity or prove his source so that that could be very well considered as an um, uh, uh, important source for the study of diksha kritis yes um, again here if if you ask me whether the versions given by subrama diksha are authentic or not as a researcher i can say um by if you, if you are going to consider the um acumen musical acumen of subrama dikshita you can very well say it could be near original versions because any which way when it is getting transmitted from one person to another there could be some amount of deterioration say the deterioration value might differ say 1% 0.1% to 10% or 100% can differ but in this case it could be very well, well less than 1% as a as a lay uh, uh, student of music who is who was much who is much fascinated um by the work of subramani shidhar i would say 100% but as a researcher i will always give some leverage of oh, say 1% and then consider that it could be 99% authentic and uh, what happened to prove authenticity we need to cross refer two or three versions to in, for any kriti so i happen to see two other versions one is by tirupam rathras nirpalle which is again published as a book diksha kirtana prakashika and another one a manuscript which is now preserved by the descendants of tanjavur quartet tanjavur quartet they are uh, four uh, shivanandam chinaya ponnaya shivanandam madivelu and the descendants of shivanandam uh, is now in chennai uh, is mr shivakumar and he was uh, much happy to share uh, uh, the knowledge that he had regarding these manuscripts because he belonged to the family and he cautiously preserved uh, even now he is preserving those manuscripts so happen to see those manuscripts at least see what it is there adla paakara che nariya kirtanangal adhe maari da irukku subramadikshi eppadi kuduthirukkaro appadi da adla irukku ippa nama paarama kandipa kadaiyadu konja konja differences irukku that that should be that is to be allowed for a uh, an art like our music ana adu vandu romba romba kammi and the change ipo tyagaraja compositions paathona ivlo tyagaraja maakrom ipo sandeham udipa vayya i want to give some new example usually we say the example we give the example nyanu sagrada or sita maima i'll give some other example sandeham utipavayya is now sang in um, ramapriya it has it had a version gamanashrama and the gamanashrama version uh, in again the interesting point na tilasthanam ramayanga's disciple was the krishna bhagavatar harikatha exponent krishna bhagavatar it seems he used to sing this kriti in gamanashrama Tilasthanam Ramayanga's disciple was uh, Narasimha Bhagavadar. He has published a book. And the book is given as Ramapriya. So, a dis- two disciples who has learned from the same teacher has given two different versions. But this kind, these kind of uh, 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 discrepancies cannot be seen much in these shakiris. Even there we see uh, Mahisha Suramardhani in Narayani Kirtanam. We sometimes hear it in Bidahari. And uh, Sri Ganesha Puram the Kirtanam and we, uh, we hear it in Veena Vadhani also. Uh, these are very few examples uh, but in general we don't get to see the, uh, the differences in ragas avlo difference paaka mudiyadilla um adla kuda the the version itself what was given by subrama dikshita matched very well with the versions which i saw in the manuscripts romba alla ottu pochu adu paakradhil endra i was enna solradhu innume jaasti aayiruthu subrama dikshita mela irukra oru oru madipu 
எவ்வளவு தூரம் நைன்டீன் ஜீரோ ஃபோர் இட் டுக் பெயிண்ட் டு ரெக்கார்ட் தோஸ் தோஸ் கிருதிஸ் அண்ட் சீரியஸ்லி மார்க்கிங் த கமகாஸ் ஆல்சோ இட் ஜஸ்ட் வாண்ட் டு மேக் எவ்ரி ஒன் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் த கமகாஸ் அண்ட் சிங் ஆஸ் இட் ஆஸ் ஹி ஹேஸ் லேர்ன் ஸோ ஹவு மச் இன்ட்ரெஸ்ட் ஹி ஹேட் டு ப்ராபகேட் இஸ் ஃபேமிலி மியூசிக் அதனால அண்ட் தேர்ட் திங் தீஷகித பிரகாஷிகா பை திருப்பாம நடராசுந்தரம் பிள்ளை ஈவன் தட் புக் வெரி மச் சிமிலர் டு சம்பிரதாய பிரதர்ஷினி so we can whether we like it or not that is different um we should rely on sampradaya pradarshini at least for doing research if you want to do some research or if you want to do give some authentic details regarding the the kritis of utsavam dikshita it is better to refer to sampradaya pradarshini there is one question here arvind there are many kritis that are not mentioned in the sampradaya pradarshini very popular kritis yes yes right which don't find mention in the sampradaya pradarshini i think akilandeshwari is one such kriti right indujavanti or jujavanti or jay jayvanti the various versions of the raga names so what has been the 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 comment of later researchers or as you have read through that what has been their remark on that like are those to be treated as because they also have come from some shishya paramparas you know to us now so how, how to treat these kind of kritis who are which are outside of the sampradaya pradarshini um the thing here is uh, i just want to make a point here uh, we cannot um just discard the kritis just because they are not there in sampradaya pradeshan so we should always consider a fact that uh, there are genuine kritis of muthu swami dikshitar outside the realm of sampradaya pradeshan so because at no point Uh, in his text at no place in his text subrahma dikshit says i have given all the kritis ella kritis um kuduthe avan solala enak therinja kritis kudutharam kuda solala avan so we should uh, because he was so uh, so smart person he was when when you read to the sampradaya pradeshini whether you are a musician or a student or even a, a person who is not even interested in music if you just go through the the text you, you can definitely see that Uh, he was a good researcher he has searched a lot and made a point that ellame oru velipadiya solalavar nariya vishayatha apdi solli irupa irkar anga nda kudutirupa irkar namba da theedi pidichu kandupidikka vendi irukku oh ipdi irukuma apdi irukuma it makes you think a lot so uh, when a such, a such a person uh, didn't even make a remark that he has given all the kritis of muthu swami dikshitar that was known to him or all the kritis of muthu swami dikshitar in general so we should not disregard the kritis outside pradeshini but at the same time we cannot consider all the kritis outside pradeshini as authentic compositions of dikshita because akila uh, deshri i have read somewhere even uh, uh, srimati dk patama has given as mentioned that it was it is not a kriti of uh, dikshita i have read some uh, in an article also so it is clear that uh, that at least that kriti is not that of dikshita so other kritis how uh, again we should see here uh, two different uh, points one is who first sang the kriti which musician first sang the kriti and if possible try to trace his source and second thing try to identify the sources um, i mean for these kritis in some other shishya parampara for example uh, if you take a kriti malakatha lingam in vasanta we just take malagalingam asanta this malagalingam is not seen in um, sampradaya pradeshini so it uh, it was first published by uh, the uh, kalluri kulchi brothers veena sundaram ayyar uh, either him or his brother it was first published by them by them so we uh, again their source was ambidikshita ambidikshita was the son of subrahma dikshita again it takes back to subrahma dikshita so subrahma dikshitar was uh, much anterior in the time period and he never had any necessity to prove his authenticity or to make sure that everyone uh, is aware of mutsam dikshitar kritis so in that in such a case how come ambi dikshitar uh, uh, inherited these kritis is the question one because he was the source for these two uh, these brothers then in that case we need to next search for uh, search for this kriti in um, other uh, other disciple lineage like uh, satanur panchanarayar 
or any descendants of uh, any descendants or disciples of sudamatan tambiyappa there was avudiya kovil um, i forgot his name there was a disciple in, near avudiya kovil i think subramaniyar and uh, again any disciples can be traced to his, this lineage we should search for these and then again in the tanjavur quartet that that disciple lineage or descendant lineage we should search for this kriti in all these sources if they can be seen in any of the other sources we can say this is a genuine kriti else it's better not to believe that because uh, in the quartet uh, the manuscripts i was able to locate some around 100 compositions of dikshit of these 100 compositions three or four, five five compositions uh, were not given by subramanya dikshit these five compositions are dance compositions uh dance la uh, uh, and the diksha time period la there, there was something called nirupanas nirupana is a dance form which uses 15 different form of uh, dance elements like swarajati varnam and ma ellame irukondla so uh, these five kritis belong to that set so i made a hypothesis and also written written a paper that mutsav diksha could have composed nirupanas not one more than one two or three so these five kritis were known uh, uh, these five kritis belong to that set and hence they were known only to tanjavur quartet it's highly logical because they are all dancers so they get to know these compositions out of uh, uh, other than these five compositions i was unable to locate even a single composition of mutsav dikshit that which which cannot which can which um, which cannot be identified in sampradaya parishi all the compositions are 90 or 95 number they were all uh, notated by subramanya dikshit so this again increases the authenticity of um, subramanya dikshit thirdly when i used to check for the manuscripts i have i locate many manuscripts i uh, in the manuscripts la enna aguna usually we find the kritis of tyagaraja we find kritis of padas uh, of kshetriya we find kritis of gopalakrishna bhati it is very very rare to find kritis of um, mutsav dikshit shama sastri very very rare and uh, uh, that is uh, this again proves that the kritis of mutsav dikshit were not popular if a uesa would uesa is written an account on the various musicians adile mutsav dikshit pathi edirache the three people are brothers romba na veena vasipa and maada kudukra thavara he didn't even uh, took pain to elaborate on the life history of mutsav dikshit so that was his popularity nariya and and the limited sect ku matto popular irukano outside that he was not so popular so i think i, I think uh, as you are saying also right i think it it occurs more to me that the work of subramanya dikshit is probably a monumental work because if it had not been that work probably the popularity or bringing out of this treasure of dikshit kritis would have been probably lost yes you know seeing this kind of a uh, a situation that was there at that point of time i just wanted to make that please please go ahead i happen to locate a manuscript of bharatam natesayar again when reading this manuscripts the area from which the particular musician comes from is plays a very very important role because that determines the uh, the composition matrix the composer matrix uh, because it display the uh, the compos- compositions prevalent in that region so i should thank the music academy authorities and uh, a secretary st uh, shriya venkatakrishnan pola allow me to see the manuscripts in music academy anga or manuscript irukke written by bharatam natesayar bharatam natesayar is considered to be um, the father of modern uh, bhagavad meda bhagavad meda ipo irukkaradhu kaaranam bharatam natesayar da avar vande avaroda manuscript anga irukke uh, e his time period was uh, between somewhere around 189 1870s or 60s 1930s 1930s or 34 he passed away so this manuscript 1935 he passed away so it, this manuscript could have been written before 1930 definitely before 1930 so why this manuscript carries importance is that um, this is one of the very few, very few manuscript which has diksha kriti notation it again pakrache um he hails from melatur actually usually melatur musicians were all trained by krishna bhagavad sundar bhagavad if you go to if you happen to see uh, in, get to meet any musician from melatur i mean any old musician who has learned 
from a musician who lived in melatur the probability of that musician learning from krishna bhaga sundar bhaga is very high same with kumbakonam musicians also this entire belt was much uh, much uh, dominated by krishna bhaga sundar bhaga the tanjavur belt by manavu chari venkata subaya so that that the distinction can be uh, easily seen so melatur bahadur mate sayar i do not know from whom he has learned this diksha kritis but bm as dr bm sundaram has written an article wherein he says he has learned from uh, one of the descendant of tanjavur quartet so i believe this could be what i am going to say could be a version from that side there is a kriti there vadaneshwaram this vadaneshwaram is not totated by subrahma dikshit but this kriti uh, unlike many other kritis many other non sampradaya pradeshini kritis this kriti is uh, not have any fault uh, with respect to sahityam sahitya the pesa tappu prasam and the edugai and the prasam or sahityam patila and the jahi tappu irukadu in the vadaneshwaram romba nalla irukku the kriti vadaneshwaram devagandari if you are going to look into the uh, version of vadaneshwaram it will be much different from what it is sung now and what it is what you can see in the book by veena sundaramayya this vadaneshwaram devagandari much corresponds to the version uh, given in sampradaya pradeshini the raga structure i am saying the raga structure goes very much similar to the kshitijaramanam given in sampradaya pradeshini and there is also chittaswaram chittaswaram bi irukna or particular phrase mattume eduthundu adu adu thirupi 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 vara maadhiri panirukku this kind of pattern can be seen in diksha kritis also even chittijaramanam you find a such a such a pattern even gauri uh, kriti sri meenakshi gauri you get to see such a kind of pattern or swayatha matti eduthundo illa or phrase eduthundo adha vechi thirupi thirupi vara maadhiri this kriti has that padaneshwaram by velatur velatur nateshayar has that uh, chittaswaram and it also has that uh, kriti padaneshwaram notation i just want to learn and upload in my channel i do not know when i will be doing that but that padaneshwaram is so typical because um, that is that was written anywhere before 1930 1930 could be the last probable date it could be even 18 uh, 1890 or 1900 because it was so active at that period of time uh, and the period la edapatta manuscript adu and it was published before the arrival of the books by veena sundaramayya well before the arrival of books by veena sundaramayya so this kriti plays a very very uh, this vadaneshwaram is uh, definitely we can consider to be an authentic source other problem is that with respect to agarya kritis you had many 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 disciples enga poi ketalum they will trace back to umayalam krishna bhagavad sundar bhagavadar or manavu chari venkata subayar even now we hear nanga sixth generation seventh generation eighth generation they say but for dikshitar we do not find such a kind of uh, lineage we have again through only through vinay uh, sundaramayya or his brother anand krishna here we have the lineage otherwise at that point on our no one says um, um, i i belong to eighth generation from satnur panchara here i belong to eighth generation subrahma dikshitar abriya solade kadaiya i do not know why anga enna aachin therla ngedu break aayirukenga and idu after this even tirupamram swaminathan pillai i mean whose father natras sundaram pillai was a student of satnur panchara here and he has learned natras sundaram pillai swaminathan pillai and his brothers adukku apprame lineage illa adukku apprame break aayirukku there are few students uh, of uh, 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 better of swaminathan pillai soma sundaram pillai soma sundaram pillai oda disciples vandu iruka ipo kuda iruka but they also claim that i belong to the tirupamram family but they do not claim i belong to the family of mutsam dikshit but as the disciples it is so common na vandu parambu chavadi oda parambara apdi solla paakrom so this is the main point with respect to mutsam dikshit kritis they were not popular irundirukku or 30 kriti solla avladha irundirukku adhu mele kadaiyadhu அந்த கிருதிக்கு அப்புறம் ஜாஸ்தி பரவல அந்த கிருதிகள் அவரை பத்தியே ஜாஸ்தி ஐடியாஸ் ஜாஸ்தி தெரியல இப்ப சுப்ரமணியேஸ்வர் as you have said if if not for சுப்ரமணியேஸ்வர் all these kritis could have uh, என்ன சொல்றது போயிருக்கும் எதுவே போயிருக்கும் ஒண்ணுமே இருந்துகாது at least for few kritis which has been changed the version has been changed the raga has been changed we could get a good good version from சுப்ரமணியேஸ்வர் again whether we like it or not whether we sing it or not that's different because they sound much different that is different yeah. at least we should make an attempt to at least archive these old versions at least for our reference as a as an ardent devotee of these composers as, as a community which is 
much importance to these comp uh, composers, we need to take few proactive measures to preserve these old versions. It's my opinion. Absolutely. There's one other point, Arvind. Since um, we spoke about both Tyagaraja Swami and Dikshitan, Shama Shastri Kritis. Okay, probably among if you look at the number of Kritis of the Trinity, probably we what we have right now the the least number of Kritis is of Shama Shastri Gal. What happened in that parampara after Shama Shastri Gal? Do you have you could just throw some light on that? Uh, actually, I didn't do much research on Shama Shastri Gal family. I mean the disciple family because again there's a paucity of the number of disciples with respect to Shama Shastri. Uh, the family is still now uh, maintaining the manuscripts. Uh, it was not written by Shama Shastri Gal, but someone later uh, to Shama Shastri Gal, he has written some manuscript and they are preserved in the family by the family members and they also uh, show us those manuscripts. We can see those manuscripts. But apart from that, which other family, uh, which other disciple lineage links directly to Shama Sastrigal is a question. I have not seen anyone saying my fourth or fifth generation, I mean, this, the uh, disciple, uh, sorry, not a uh, descendant, disciple, fifth generation is, uh, was uh, Shama Sastrigal, or else other disciples of uh, Shama Sastrigal. Uh, uh, we get to see few names like Alashu Krishna here. But we do not know exactly what happened to them, what happened to his Kritis. Subhanam Dikshar had a manuscript of Shama Sasya Kritis. He, he gave it to uh, Bhatkande for publication, but unfortunately, I don't know what happened to the manuscript, whether it is still there or not. I'm much excited to even contact the descendants of Bhatkande whether, to know uh, whether they, they preserve any of his possessions. So Shama Sasya compositions, he might have composed many. Say again, number of compositions we cannot be sure. But when you consider the career of uh Tyagara Swamigal, at least if you take 60 years, he started composing even when he was in his teens. That's okay. But even if you give the leverage and take 20 years as a mark, 80 years, 60 years, 800 compositions are less. But here and there, we get to see some young compositions like P. Lakshmi Pillai has given a reference that uh, he has, he knows a composition like Abogi, Sita Raman. That composition is nowhere seen. Again, Sia Srinivas Sangha gives a composition in Raga Sama, Hari Hari Hari. That composition is nowhere seen. Again, uh, Visa Parao has mentioned, uh, as, as even reproduced many uh, unpublished kritis from Maharaja notation in Academy Journal. This is with Yagaraya Swami. Shama Sasri is much more versatile. The condition is, uh, is very bad with respect to his Kritis. 80, 80, 90, because his family, um, his name is uh, Mr. Raja. Uh, he, is, he must be around 80 years old. Uh, and he was much helpful. And he also shared the, the paper manuscripts, which was written by his grandfather. It is there in uh, Sir's site, Ramanan Sir's site. Uh, Adala Pata, there are around some 35 kritis approximately of Shama Sastigal. What happened to the rest? rest? Palim Pamamma in Mukhari and Palim Pamamma Mukhari. Ananda Vedi kritis. Other than Marivedi Kavarama and O Jagadamba, other Ananda Vedi kritis. Imachetaniya. It is more Imachetaniya. Marive Dikurama, O Jagadamba, and Pahi Sida Gira Sude. In all the manuscript of Pakamudio. Other than these four, Antak Matakidis or authenticity, another Kamutari Matagal. So, um, uh, again, Tanjaur Quartet family was much closer to the descendant of Shama Sasigal. Angi or Mutari Matagal, the Nana Kitavakit and Nache, Dache, admitted. So, it's a very sad state actually. We do not know, we don't even know the number, exact number, how much they are And here, I think again, uh, another smart thing that Subrahma Dikshita did is that in the Sampradaya Pradeshini, you do find some kritis of Shama Shastri also. Right? He has included three Swarajatis and one Varna. One Varna and a kriti in Paras. It's a five oh. compositions. Only five. Okay, okay. 
Yes. And the Tyagaraja Kriti, I don't think he has included too many or he has not included at all. Four Panchayatnas, excluding Varadi, Kanakana Ruchira and Dailini in Ayaki. Okay. So beautiful. I think. Uh, One more thing. In Pratavabhyasa Pustakamu, his second book uh, or third book, he has published some 25 or 30 Tyagaraja Kritnas. Okay. So, so which is another source, <laughs> another manuscript sort of source that comes through. Beautiful, beautiful. I think because um, this is very important for us to understand uh, this concept, Aravinda. And I think you beautifully uh, brought this out in the last few minutes that we spoke about how how these things change. And uh, knowing the life history of these composers, you know, these Vagekaras, they would have least bothered to sit and write down and notate and ask them to preserve somewhere. These would not have been in their head at all. No, they are just continuously there in their bhakti and devotion and they are continuously going ahead. Few of the really good and uh, smart disciples have uh, done some good work, you know, properly. And even that, you know, there are many uh, um, times we hear also that Tyagaraj uh, Swami would not have taught everybody the same Kriti. So probably yes. he has taught only few Kritis to few. So that also becomes another complication over the whole matter. So you don't even know even if you have just one source, is that good enough to consider or not good enough to consider? So there are too many things. I want to add this point also here. I think I should add that um, not all compositions were known to all the disciples because uh, in the disciples, uh, they they never stayed with Jagadha Swamigal for a bit of 60 or 80 years. Maximum yeah. which record is 26 years. So 26 years could have been a lot of time. So after that, there is no change in the world. So what could have happened is, uh, in the 1856 of 58, when the first book was published, uh, an attempt was taken to at least publish the Sahitya of the of, uh, of Tagalagadis. At least Sahitya. Someone else could have tuned also. And yeah. the tune could have been propagated. It could have been propagated. Especially the problem is when we are dealing with the rare ragas of Tagara Swami, we find plenty of confusions. And the confusion the reason is that, uh, what this is my opinion. Uh, I have not read it anywhere. No one has said this. This is my personal opinion. It could be wrong also. What I, I feel is Swami many Positions where is um, his personal communication with this Isha Devatam, the Sri Ramachandra Murti. And extra pola panna patadade. So he could have no. He was much aware of all the systems. Say Govindacharya system or Venkatamaga. He was much aware of all the system. But when come to this Apurva Ragas, which especially which can be seen in Sangarha Churamani, there is a single text which is known to us. But there are many other texts lying in libraries. There is a book called as. Um, Swaramela Kalanidi. This is not the Ramamatya. It was written by some other, some other person with the same name, Swaramela Kalanidi, giving the Aravana Aravana of many ragas. It is there in GOMS. It is not yet published. So, Andamani Bukkalakura, I am just giving one example, Sangarha Churamani. When you want to take, I am not saying he has taken the ragas from Sangarha Churamani. I am just giving an example. When he, he, he was much aware of the ragas seen in treatises like Sangarha Churamani or this new Swaramela Kalanidi. So what he could have done is he could have modified the scales and adapted to his needs and then composed. So at the ragam and the disciple he, he never revealed the name of his name of the ragas. Raga He never revealed. This we get from get to know from many other many different sources. Again, our disciples so uh, uh, down the line when they just check with the whether other others other lexicons especially when you want to publish a book you need to give name name kurti agano you should you should give some name so they should have they could have rep referred to some lexicons anga maarache they could have changed this ida maatrad ida maatrad abhi another club because we for this uh, we we find many articles saying this point that is many suras has been filed many phrases has been filed out and they have made to fit into the uh, Lakshana given in Sangarha Churamani. I mean, so, what I think is that they are Sangarha Churamani and they are going to go to Sangarha Or some other text like this. He could have modified that 
particular structure to suit his needs. So the disciples definitely could have not been aware of those names. And uh, he could have been a pair. He was much interested in conveying his emotion and talking with his Devata. Why should he give a name? This is my assumption. And absolutely, which is why in one of the Kriti he says that in so many Vintaragas, I am praising you and Lakshmana is happy to have uh, a And another thing that I wanted to tell you here is that, you know, we have the musicians have this very uh, unique, uh, very unique uh, capability or what I don't know what to call the moment you get some lyrics and if probably no ragam is mentioned or anything, you want to show your Vidwat there, right? You want to say that, okay, fine, I got a lyrics. Now let me tune it. It happens, you know, you, you have this in, uh, instinct to start going or even if a raga is given and there is no notation again, you want to with that raga, you want to tune it yourself and get to something. So that also is there among the musicians and especially if it is a Tyagaraja Kriti, then why not? You know, you know that it is Tyagaraja Kriti, so it's better that I compose it. So I can understand that. So the moment the raga is not mentioned or either just the raga is mentioned without notation. So these are all uh possibilities to start a new trend you know start a new uh, branch by itself so i i think this topic is a never ending topic yeah and i'm sure your research might be so exciting you know every day you must be uh yes. boggling with so many questions going around and it will be so exciting i'm i'm really happy that you're doing this i hope many more people join you uh before we end yes, our session Arvind, yeah uh, I, I would like you to demonstrate uh any one Kriti or any one part of the Kriti may, may not be the whole Kriti, maybe a Pallavi Anupalli or something like that, which today is sung in a different version probably, but based on your research, you have identified a different version of it. So something for the for the audience to just, you know, to tickle their head so that they also start going ahead on that uh, on that uh, area. So if you could just demonstrate something. I, I will just give an example. Uh... You just need you need a rare kriti or a commonly heard kriti. I think if it's a commonly heard kriti, it becomes even more interesting. Okay. Hmm. The uh, the kapi raga kritis. The the kapi ragam. Actually, Rangarama Jaya gives gives a note for the raga kamas. The ragas like kamas and kapi were modified by. Uh, especially for Kamas, he says, the Raga Kamas was modified by uh, the musicians like Ramanathan Srinivas Sengar, Patnam Subramaniyar, and they were the one who first introduced this Kakari Nishada, he says, Rangaramanathan in his text. Similarly, for the Kapi Raga Kriti, I have read that uh, for the Kriti in the Sokhyamanine, in the Kapi Raga Kriti, the present tune was uh, present tune was first uh, conceived or it was changed to present day copy. We can take that. The present day copy was first introduced by Ramanathan Srima Sengar. I have heard this. So I, I do not know how much he has how much he has changed because I am basically not interested in who has changed. I was I am much interested in what is the change. Because as I said, change will definitely happen. We should accept the change. And there's no point in saying, But thing is, when it happens to the music, it is acceptable. When it happens to the comp composition or the raga, it is not acceptable. Because we are um, depriving the next generation from learning something, uh, something which was, which is just to be preserved. The beautiful point, Arvind, you made that uh, you or your responsibility as one generation is to first of all give what is already there to the next generation as it is so that they can also do whatever they want and then on top of that if you want to do something do it additionally but yes. don't tamper too much with what is given to you yes, because yes. you are right the next generation gets deprived of even yes. knowing that such a thing was there i think that's a beautiful point Please, this copy, this copy the old copy will be more like darbar. If other kid to none of the darbar, I can't either go. So now, first to park a chain, I was much confused with two ragas one is Balahamsa, other one is copy. Why is this copy like this? It's a 
that time, see, uh, 2013, 13 or 14, I just started. And the Samayat lab, we do not have these many resources. But this made me to meet Dr. Ramana and sir, and then, and then we, he clarified, he started the journey. That's different. But up and the Samayat lab, I'm looking at the same thing. Why do you In the part of the care today, because in the same thing, it's close to everyone. It's close to everyone. Everyone likes the Kriti. Irrespective of uh, their musical knowledge, they like the Kriti. And the Mari Kriti, it was somewhat shocking to me. That's why I just, I, this, this, this query made me to read Sampadaya Pradeshini. I never had an idea that I will, I'll be even looking into Sampadaya Pradeshini. I was not even aware of Sampadaya Pradeshini. I was, I was interested only in learning the Kriti, that's all. If I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to do it. Now, I just don't want to even improvise, I want to do it. If I'm going to sing this, because the routine version can be, is, is now in practice. Is now everyone is singing that version. Everyone is there. Good singers are there to sing the routine version. But the version is like this. No one is there to sing. At least, should, at least, I, at least I should take that job. So, I just started to see Sampadaya Pradeshini. This becomes helpful because the ragas they copy, or um, they are, it is a really an old raga, and you get to see a composition of Madhavi Seshengar, um, Veerabhadraya, Badracham Ramadasa. These are uh, notated by Subramadishida. So we get to know this raga was much in use. So, and the my raga, I can Sampadaya Pradesh is much more helpful. How the Gamagas were? Because in a part of the Dalbar Mari Gekarache, our end of the Gamagam Pakala. Gamagas, again, it is subjective. These Gamagas are reconstructions by me. Anyone can reconstruct with their own Gamaga. Again, Gamagas of that period, of this period. We can do that comparison also. I just follow Chikon to that period Gamagas by taking some prior as an example. So, we will see in this document, we will much um, more looks like a Dadba. I will just sing and show that. In the Sokya Manhine Paja In the Sokya Manhine Paja it will sound much outlandish. But as you get used to these versions, you it will also get an equal amount of enjoyment with these versions. You get the same feel. Added to this, you are you can just think that you are singing a version which is no more in use, but which was in use, which was extended some around 150 or 200 or 250 years before. At least you are singing a version which was learned by Venkatana Bhagavadar, who has seen Swamigal personally, who has interacted with Swamigal. He was a much a great uh, bhakta of Swamigal. Our Kathrinda version and our Padra have been told that they were Sando Show. I mean, if you are much confident, if you really uh, go to the works of Kathrinda Bhagavad, you can definitely say that he was uh, a good um, a musician. He was a good, uh, he could have been a good, I uh, don't uh, amanuensis. Of course, I don't know. I don't know. Again, some amount of depreciation must be there. At least we can uh, we can reproduce the phrases seen there, seen during his period. In the my copy became more there. The copy poet. This is no more in use. At least we can get back that copy, the old flavor of it. Absolutely. And I must just say this because because you sang this, right? I think uh, as you said even in the beginning, you are at least trying to put all this on a platter. Yes making it available to the musicians and the researchers and everybody you know the entire those who are all interested in this now it's up to them to take it ahead to see what can be done with this so i think the contribution is really superb the kind of work that you're doing and the kind of work people who whom you are doing with 
you know all the all those people i think it's a superb work of course as you said it is not about condemning somebody or not it's not the, the objective is not there the objective is just that so we this, also as this generation yes. would like to know what was there you know because now we have a particular a particular version but what was it initially also we would like to know yes you know we would like to know what has changed so then we take, we take a call because every to assume that somebody is not intelligent enough is not uh, right hypothesis anyways every generation there will be intelligent people who will also give thought to this so i think it's a wonder it's been a wonderful session arvin the objective of the session was only to uh, start a food for thought for people to start at least some kind of thinking because i'm sure uh, a one hour session is not enough to talk on this topic you know at least i have been talking with you before this itself on multiple uh, multiple sessions itself on this topic so this is only a glimpse i would say of the kind of work that you are already doing and the kind of work that is left to be done but at least this will be some food for thought for people who are interested in this area and probably they can also contact you who are is interested in doing more in this area so there is also a, a, an opportunity for people to get in touch with the like minded I people and help from many quarters because this deals with manuscripts so if anyone uh, who sees this or who knows uh, someone is having the manuscript they can just contact me because uh, i will i will not even take the originals with me original manuscript is will, will be with only with the particular um, person who possesses the manuscript i will just take a photograph not even a photocopy because i won't even touch many of the uh, manuscripts in a paper or palm leaf uh, or uh, I, i i have seen much dilapidated condition totale adde urundu poyira maari irukum thodakoda maten i'll just take a photograph and then take for analysis and i always ta- uh, thank and acknowledge the source if at all i am able to say confidently this has happened this could be like this this could have could have been like this abina it is because of these uh, contributors these many contributors they are not known to this world but i make sure that i say them whenever i just use their material as a reference so i just always uh, acknowledge the source from which i have taken because i'm I, i want to be a pure researcher i don't want my work to be uh, misappropriated at the same time i don't want to leave anyone who have helped me anyone who have helped me in this endeavor i will just acknowledge them at that point i i, I am doing this for in my all my programs so uh, if anyone possesses a valuable manuscript because uh, tagaraj critical critical um, cannot be restricted to tamil nadu alone they all the disciples uh, migrated to um, andhra pradesh parts of andhra pradesh or parts of karnataka parts of kerala and i am unable to uh, get contact in those regions due to many limitations so if anyone sees this and this contact me will be much, much more happy to even analyze more on this so for this purpose i have also uh, the youtube channel which i have i frequently upload this composition so anyone can listen to those compositions and anyone i am i am open to any comments even if if they say it's not it's not sounding good i don't mind because it's their opinion and it takes time for anyone to get used to these versions so if they say good i will take it if they just some some people ask me to to sing a particular kriti this kriti they will specify and ask me to sing the old version or the varadhe pat version i just do that so it's it's like a hobby which uh, which is of use to many so it should be used it should be useful to many and it should be used by many for uh, me to again it's not my work i don't think uh, this has been my work this i feel it's a call, it's a order given by swami gal himself to make these things available to you and as you have said correctly it's not the condemning it condemning anyone tappu ayite kadaiyathu idu maari poradhu unna maari poyidhu but we should take attempts to preserve what was there at least at this point of time so adukaga konjam effort da i am much happy that you are so interested and uh, you made uh, a special program on this to highlight this uh, contribution uh, as you said one hour is definitely not sufficient now taste le pogra ena aachu eda aachu ama 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 no it's beautiful beautiful arvin i'm really thankful that you could do this for our session and let's plan many more sessions in the future with specific topics in mind we will do that okay sure, sure. so thanks a lot thanks a lot arvin thank you so rasikas as you saw there are so many allied aspects to an art form the art form is one the practitioner of the art form as it is today 
but how has it come down generations when we speak about guru parampara vande guru parampara we are speaking about the guru parampara how has it got handed down from the guru to the shishya from the shishya to the shishya how has this tradition come how was being an oral tradition oral and oral both ways so these all are very very interesting areas allied you know with the central art form itself and uh, we have the younger generation as you saw arvind uh, represents the younger generation who is so much interested and who is taking uh, deep interest in these kind of topics so those of you who might be interested um, in associating with these kind of activities or with arvind uh, you can definitely contact me i can share his contact with with you and you may uh, then speak to him and take this ahead let's see for many more interesting such sessions uh, in the future until then keep um, watching subhus corner both on youtube and facebook like and subscribe until the next session namaskar